to each one of you. We appreciate you being here today. Uh, we celebrate you being in this room. I know there are several this morning that are sick. Uh, we want to remember them in our prayers. I don't think anybody wants to be sick any day, but especially Christmas. But uh, let's remember those that are not able to be with us today for that reason. We know that uh, several people are out of town, people traveling here and there. But I am glad you're here this morning. Somebody asked me when we first got here, said, how many are we going to have today? I said, I don't know whether it's expect 10 or 100. I don't know. I said, but whoever will be here, we're going to celebrate together. Amen. We thank you for being here today. Amen. And we celebrate the greatest gift of all times. His name is Jesus Amen. Christ. And we're here to celebrate him today. Uh, we're going to just invite God's presence in this room this morning. Uh, Brother Terry and them are in Sanford this morning. And I want to welcome you as he would welcome you. And what he would say to you is that when you walk through that door, you just became family. But today's a very special day uh, because we've received a Christmas gift this morning. And uh, it is so good to have Sister Martha back home with us today. Amen. And uh, what a Christmas gift to have her walk in this room with us this morning. And we just thank God for her being able to be here. Thank uh, Marlon and Amy for making sure she was here today and what a blessing to our Shiloh family to have her back in this room with us today and we thank God for that. Why don't you stand with me this morning and let's just welcome the Lord's presence here in this house. There are several requests that have been brought to me already this morning, some that are sick, some battling cancer, some uh, with various things going on today, some children even this morning with uh, uh, running fevers today. So there is much to be in prayer about as well as much to be giving thanks for today. So we just want to do that together as a family this morning. Heavenly Father, we welcome you in this room today. and We simply say thank you, Father, for your blessings on us. You have come together today into our midst, Lord. And we welcome your presence in this room. For this day is about you as every day should be. But we as a Shiloh family have come together to worship you today in spirit and in truth. It is your birthday and we're celebrating the great I am this morning. Happy birthday, Jesus. And out of all the things that we could spend time asking you for today, I just feel in my heart that it would be much more appropriate just to spend the next few moments saying thank you, Lord. You know all of our need and you are very concerned about every request and every need. But this morning, rather than petitioning you for more, I just want to give thanks for the next few moments for what you've already done. Lord, you've been so good to us here at Shiloh. You've blessed us in so many ways. You have come before us, God, on so many occasions and allowed the anointing of the Holy Spirit just to saturate this room you saved souls this year. You've delivered people and set them free from bondage. You've grown us in the spirit of Jesus and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you today for every gift, every blessing, every opportunity, God, that you have afforded us to come into your presence. And today, once again, on this, your special day, we want to say thank you, Jesus, for all that you are, all that you have been, and all that is yet to come. We know our future is bright and the best is yet to come. And so today we celebrate you in this room. We thank you, Lord, for every gift and every blessing and every opportunity you have afforded us, God, throughout this year. Now, Lord, as we celebrate you today and we look forward to next Sunday with the dawn of a, a new year, we anticipate, God, all that you have in store for us. I thank you, Father, that throughout this year, the blessings that have come. But God, we anticipate that our future is bright and we look forward to that. Add your blessings, Lord, to everything that is said or sung or done here today in this house as we celebrate Jesus in this room. Amen and amen. We want to invite Terry and Keith to come on at this time. And as they're making their way this way, can we just say to you, we're glad you're here and will you just join us today in worshiping God not only vertically, thank you brother, not only worshiping God vertically, 
but why don't we just take a moment and worship Him horizontally as we just kind of greet those that are around us this morning and let us worship uh, Him together as we do that today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Good morning. And especially good morning to the ones that's watching us on the iPad. We just want to thank you for being with us today. And we hope this Advent season has, has meant something to you this year. Hope, maybe, hoping maybe you've learned something along the way with the videos that's been shown and everything. That, uh, it just brings a little bit more life to what the celebration of the birth of Jesus. And as we look for that second coming. Today is a special day for all people, and especially for those who have g gathered here to celebrate our last Advent service for this year. Today we will light the white candle in our wreath. This candle has a special meaning to us as Christians, as to those who, that worship our God and our Savior. The waiting is over. We celebrate the birth of Christ. Oh, I have to excuse my voice, it's terrible. <clears throat> In this season of Advent, we have used the Advent wreath and its candles to help us prepare for this great celebration of the birth of Christ. When we lit the first purple candle, we asked God to come and be our good shepherd. We were hoping for a savior to come to us. <clears throat> when we lit the second purple candle, we asked God to come and forgive our sins. God has come as Jesus Christ to take our sins and die upon the cross so that we might be forgiven. When we lit the third purple candle, we felt love in our longing for Christ to come. We remembered that Christ would come as a son, the son of Mary, the son of David, and the son of God. When we lit the fourth candle, we felt joy knowing that Christ offers unfailing love and we should sing praises to his name. We should rejoice in knowing that God is with us and that he will come again. Today, we will light the candle of Christ. This candle represents purity and light. We celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, Jesus the Good Shepherd, Jesus who forgives our sins Jesus who will come again Jesus the son of Mary the son of David and the very son of God Emmanuel the prince of peace Lord master the light of the world king of all kings and the son of man this son has been born we have a short video at this time
the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Will everyone please stand as we're going to sing Heart to Her with the Angels Sing. We're going to sing the uh, two verses. We're going to sing two verses. pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today and our hearts are filled with great joy for the gift that you give us. We understand the decrees that it took to bridge the gap between fallen man and a perfect God. It has been said that you bankrupt heaven for the soul of man. You gave the very light of that city that those of us that were so undeserving could come to a place of repentance and receive you as our Savior. Once the plan had been established, the decree had been set forth. Then one thing was left to be done. You gave your only begotten Son. So that whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord could and would be saved. So today we say thank you Jesus for coming, for living, and for dying. So today we celebrate the birth and we look forward to the great resurrection. For we know that on that Easter morn you come forth out of that grave. And in that hope of resurrection that I may know him in the power of his resurrection 
and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Today, along with the writer of Philippians 3 and 10, we rejoice that we can know you. It is by that birth and by that death set forth in that resurrection that we have the hope that we now have in Christ Jesus. So today we pause and we say, thank you, Jesus. Happy birthday, Jesus. The resurrected hope, our Savior, the Redeemer of mankind. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray today. Amen and amen. Can you join me in saying thank you, Jesus, today? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Season in our services, we just like to, me and Terry, we just like to thank each and every one who participated, especially our church that participated in all. We hope that the, this Advent with the videos and the songs, it, I hope you, it kind of stuck to you a little bit. Maybe if you haven't been to Advent services, uh, maybe you learn a little something and you do it all year long. Advent is supposed to be all year long. We're supposed to be looking for the second coming. We've had the birth today, but now we are looking for the second coming of our Lord. We just want to wish each and every one a Merry Christmas.
Thank you, Jesus. By way of a reminder and announcement, I just want to remind you of next Sunday. We're able to kick off a brand new year in the presence of God. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you would challenge yourself by the leading and the help of the Holy Spirit that you pledge to God as a great gift? Lord, I'm going to be in your house every Sunday next year that is humanly possible for me to be here. I'm not going to let anything hinder me, God, unless it's out of my control. Amen. That would be a wonderful gift to give to him. Today is uh, next Sunday is going to be a great day of celebration as well as we uh, launch our new year and that that God has laid upon our hearts. I'm so excited to share that with you, the vision for 2023. We're also going to be having a note burning next Sunday morning. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. And we thank God for that and we look forward to that. And then we're going to do it up right at the end of the service and we're just going to have a good old fashioned New Year's celebration meal right here at Shiloh because <laughs> it just seems like we have to eat. Amen. Uh, Keith is working really hard and diligent and I made mention of a few things that evidently my wife is not favorable on her plate to have. Uh, so she wanted me to make sure that I shared with you that there's going to be food here for everybody. Uh, next Sunday, not just collards and turnips and things of that nature, but there'll be something here for everybody uh, next Sunday. But what Keith needs out of you, he has a sign-up sheet back there in front of the sound booth. And if you and your family are going to be able to be here, if you'll just write your name on there and tell him how many is coming in your group, that way he knows how many to prepare for. Because he don't want to prepare for 100 if there's going to be 150. Uh, that would be embarrassing. And then he don't want to prepare for 150 if there's only going to be 75 that are staying to eat. Uh, so it's New Year's Day. What a great uh, opportunity we have to be able to kick off the new year fellowshipping and loving on one another and being blessed in the presence of God and with each other. So please keep that in mind before you leave today. If you've not got your name on that paper and how many is coming with you, please see to that today. And that will help him so much. And I'll do my best to make sure that I put out reminders of that throughout this coming week. We're here today to prepare the way. We're here today to say thank you, Lord. Can you believe the preacher forgot that? It is, it's Sunday. It's Sunday. But it's also Christmas. Can you believe the preacher forgot to cut his phone off? But you know what? That's, that's my best friend in all the world right there that's calling me. And he normally calls me one time of year. I think I'm going to just answer it. No, I'm just picking. I'm just picking. I can't believe I forgot to cut. I, as many times as I've told people, cut your phone off in church. Reminds me of a story I'll share just because I'm embarrassed now. <laughs> Pulled up to a gravesite one day, me and another pastor, and we were about to do a funeral at the gravesite. And he looked at me and he said, uh, make sure you put your phone on silent. And I said, yeah, I've already done that. And he said, okay, good. And he put his phone back in his pocket and we got out, got over there to the uh, grave site. Service had started and guess whose phone run? His. <laughs> and I looked at him and he looked at me and we both knew that he had put his phone on silent. But for that day and that moment, his phone just decided it was going to ring anyhow. So... It happens, but I had not put my phone on silent. That I apologize. But we're here today to prepare the way. Part of that is acknowledging those around us that need our prayers today. We've done some of that already. And part of that is acknowledging what God has already done. Uh, this past week, and I, I just waited till today because I just felt like it'd be a great day to celebrate this. Many of you and most of you in this room may already know this today, uh, but one of our very own, he walked through a very low valley this year. He walked out of this church on a Sunday morning knowing that he was needing prayer and asked for it a couple of times on the way out of the room, not knowing what that week held for him. And he literally walked through the valley of the shadow of death to hear the doctor standing, and you've heard his testimony, standing by his bedside, saying to him, 
guy, you're not supposed to be here. Uh, somebody say, but God. But God. And uh, since that time, he had come home with a monitor, and he had been um, wearing that monitor. But uh, I want us to stand this morning and celebrate with Brother Cliff because Wednesday afternoon he got a phone call and said, guess what? You can take your monitor off. You no longer need that today. Amen. Amen. It's part of saying thank you to Jesus and celebrating moments like that because they're wins. They're wins for our Savior. Amen. They're weapons that are formed against each one of us in this room. But God, and I'm so thankful today, as we celebrate Him, we cannot help but celebrate what He has done for us. Nothing greater than the salvation that He has provided for us in bridging the gap between fallen man and a perfect God. But here today, we're here to prepare the way, and part of that preparation we'll get to in just a few moments. But I'm going to be very mindful of the time this morning. But we do want to prepare the way. What John the Baptist did for Israel, Advent can do for us. Don't let Christmas find you unprepared. And I mean spiritually unprepared. You see, its joy and impact will be so much greater if you're ready. So that you might be prepared. First, meditate on the fact that we need a Savior. Can somebody say amen? amen? Christmas is an indictment before it becomes a delight. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. If you don't need a Savior, then you don't need Christmas. Christmas will not have its intended effect until we feel desperately the need for a Savior. So let these short Advent meditations help us awaken in each of us a bittersweet sense of need for the Savior. And can I just say to you today that you and I don't just need a Savior for salvation. You see, when we think about the Savior, we generally just think about the gift of salvation. But friend, we need a Savior in all things and in all ways. In every aspect of our life from the very breath that we breathe to the existence that we have in this known and unknown world that we live in. So may we today begin in this celebration of the life of Jesus today by meditating on the fact that you and I, we need a Savior. And then secondly, that we engage in sober self-examination. For Advent is to Christmas what Lent is to Easter. And therefore we declare, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, let every heart prepare him room by cleansing our hearts today. So first, we meditate on the need that we have for a Savior. And secondly, we engage in sober self-examination. God, help us today to prepare our hearts for you. And then third, we build a God-centered anticipation and expectation and excitement in our hearts and in our homes, especially for the children. I, I'm just touched this morning by the small children in this room today. And I say thank you. I applaud you parents today. Because we need to build a, a, a God-centered anticipation and expectancy and excitement into our homes, especially for the children. If you're excited about Christ, then they'll be excited about Christ. If you can make Christmas exciting only with material things, how will the children get their thirst for God? I believe we are to blend the efforts of our imagination to make the wonders of the King's arrival visible for the children. And then fourthly, 
that we be much in the Scriptures. Amen, church. Amen. This, this word here, it is, the, it is the tool that God has given us. It's His word. It is for the edifying of the saints. It is for the upbuilding of the kingdom and it is for direction for our life. May we blend our imagination to make the wonders of this king's arrival visible for the children so that fourthly we can be much prepared by scripture. Memorizing the great passages. It's not uh, my word like fire declares the word of the Lord. He says, gather around that fire this Advent season, for it is warmth to our hearts. It is a sparkle with the colors of grace, and it is a healing for a thousand hurts over again. It is the light of dark nights, and He is that light. We call Him Jesus. We call Him Emmanuel. We call Him King of kings and Lord of lords. We call Him Savior. But my greatest and most dearest title that I get to call Him today is friend. And in that hope we have today, not only do we have a Savior, not only do we have a great provider, not only do we have the great I Am, the creator of all things, but we have in Him a friend that will stick closer than a brother. Guys, I want to tell you, the greatest gift we can ever give our children is to let them see Jesus being a friend to us. Amen. So today we've gathered in this room to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and do that today. So on this Christmas morning, we've gathered around the sparkle and the warmth of this Savior through His Holy Spirit. And today we want to do that through Holy Communion. So this morning, I just want to invite you along with me. In this moment and time of preparation to receive the gifts that we commence to call upon Holy Communion, we're reminded that the Word says, as oft as we do this. So we know He declares us that we are to do this often. And as we do it, what a great treasure on this Christmas morning to be able to celebrate communion with our Lord and Savior. But before we do that, we know what God's Word has declared, that one, being you and I, must first examine our own hearts and simply say to Him today, Father, if they be anything found in me that is unpure and unholy, Father, place that under the blood today. Forgive us, Lord, of all of our unrighteousness. Make clean my heart in the presence of Almighty God today that I might be able to celebrate in this holy communion this morning. Would you join me in that prayer today? Heavenly Father, we thank you because you give us an occasion to be able to come into your presence humbled by the grace of of Almighty God. Lord, not one of us in this room today of our own right and merit are worthy to receive that that you have prepared for us. But because of your grace, because of the gift of salvation, because of the measure of faith that has been dealt to each one of us, today, we're able to gather around the table and celebrate who Jesus really is. Though he was a babe in a manger, he did not remain there. He grew in stature, the word says, but he also grew as man, but fully God. So today we pause through Holy Communion and we draw near to the sacrifice that was made for us. And we celebrate the birth of Jesus today. And we ask you, Father, to examine our hearts this morning. Father, if there be anything in us, God, that needs to be placed under that blood, we are so pleading with you. Do that this morning. 
Present us, Lord, as a holy and an acceptable sacrifice in the presence of Almighty God today. And as we say to you this morning, Happy Birthday, Jesus. We celebrate you today by joining in your life and in the sacrifice that was made for us. Soon we will receive that wafer that represents your body and that juice that represents your blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. By your stripes we are healed. And by the laying down of that spotless lamb, who took your life? No, not one. But you freely gave it that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So on this Christmas day, we join with you and we remember. We not only remember the birth, we remember the life and we remember the death. But we remember the resurrection. For it is in that resurrection that we have our hope today. And that hope is in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I would like to ask Tammy and um, McGill and Lydia if you will join me this morning. I've chose to do communion this way today. Amy and Marlon, if you could bring Sister Martha, if she is willing and able to come and let her sit on this front row today. Cliff, would you assist me this morning, sir? Cliff, Cliffy. If you will pass one of these to each one that would like to receive, beginning with Miss Martha and her family here today. This is truly a gift that God has given us here today. Um, Freddie, I'd like you and Cindy as well to come this morning and sit here with Miss Martha. I could invite the whole church because she's all of our family today. We're going to give Cliff just a few moments to get around the room to everyone. And while that is taking place this morning, I want us to begin to turn our focus toward Jesus. What He has done for us. It's an emotional day. I was thinking this morning as I had gotten up about some things that had happened in my life, just times when I felt like maybe I was overlooked. You ever just had a birthday and somebody you thought was going to call you didn't call? Or maybe you thought someone was going to come by that didn't come by. You kind of felt overlooked. I thought about how Jesus must have felt this morning on his birthday. I wonder how many homes he was overlooked today. I don't think any of ours. But it's his birthday. I don't know of any way to share in his birthday any better than doing what he asked us to do. And he said to us, as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. I want to give Sister Lydia an opportunity to say whatever's on her heart this morning. Then we're going, once everyone is received, then we're going to pray and we're going to receive Holy Communion together. that comes to mind is usually on our birthday we receive gifts but isn't that something that God the creator 
of all things, the maker, the master. On this special day, instead of him receiving, he gave. And how many times do we think as human beings that we deserve what we have? Yet we see in the scriptures that Jesus came and when he came, he came to serve. He came to give. So I'm reminded today that as a believer, and I remind you today as a believer that we're called to be a blessing because we already have been blessed. As the presence of God fills this room, there's so many things that not only personally I am thankful for and you're thankful for, but as the church, the body of Christ, together, gathered together in unity, as we begin to be grateful and as we begin to bless the name of the Lord and as we think of the greatest gift that we could ever receive, which is salvation and redemption and forgiveness, something we didn't deserve yet we received and it was given to us. Thank you. Lord, we're just awed. Your word says that Jesus is the name above all names. Yes. And then the word calls you wonderful and counselor, and the word calls you prince of peace. Yes. The mighty God, the great shepherd, the father, the ruler, the savior, the king of kings, and the one that's coming back. And so today I, I'm filled with that joy. Not everything is perfect in our lives. Certainly not in our lives. Not everything is perfect or the way that we would want it. But we know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And because of that, we have the joy that is unspeakable yes. and full of glory. Amen. So Lord, we thank you for the joy that surpasses anything that we can go through. Yes. We thank you for the love that you give us in spite of the fact that we didn't even acknowledge it when you gave it. We're awed, as, awed at your presence, awed as, as who you are to us. Jesus, a baby. Jesus, a servant. Jesus, the Lamb of God. Yes. But Jesus, the one that's coming back, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and today we celebrate you. And we thank you for who you are in our lives, that you could be the comforter at all times, even though life is not perfect. We know that you are the one that fills our hearts with joy so that we too can stand and say, the joy of the Lord yes. is my strength today. Amen. Amen. We invite you this morning to begin to prepare and get your wafer out. I'm sure most of you are struggling with that. It's, these things are a challenge. It's a privilege to have Sister Martha with us today. We thank God for her being able to be here. So I feel honored to be able to allow you to sit here this morning with your family and lead us in this communion. I'm going to ask Brother McGill, if he will, to address us with the command to take this bread. You know, Jesus Christ came and he died for us. But he left us a commandment that we should share one with the other. Yes. So I praise God for giving us the chance to be here today and enjoying and loving one another, sharing with one another. And he gave us the command for us to get and be together and take this wafer representing the representing his body. Yes, thank you, Jesus. And can you hold this for me, baby? Thank you, Jesus. And when when he took it, yes. he said, break it. And eat it, because this is my body. Amen.
And in the same hour, I've thought about this scene so many times. The humility of this moment. The preparation of knowing what was before him. The forgiveness that was wrapped in that moment. Not only for past sins, present sins. It was sitting among him right there. The representation of all sin. In the command, what you are about to do. Go do it. But then to see the embodiment of forgiveness. Where he said, take, eat. And then he said, receive. This cup in representation of my blood. Heavenly Father, we simply say thank you today. Thank you, Lord, for that that has been given and that that has been received. What an honor, God, you have bestowed upon us to be able to participate today in the lineage of who you are, in the legality of sin and the sacrifice that was paid for that sin. And today, today, the grace of God that supersedes every situation of my life and the full pardon of sin that has been bore into me by the gift that you laid down at a place called Calvary. A body that was broken for me and blood that was shed for me but for not me alone but for whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord so this morning in this closing prayer could I just embellish you into the thought of saying to you today regardless of where you're at maybe you're in this room or maybe you're joining us through I church can I just say to you today that His grace is sufficient for you. Though you, along with me, may feel so unworthy today, could I just extend to you the invitation on this Christmas day to say to Him, Father, I ask for forgiveness. Jesus, I invite you into my heart today. Purge me from my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Now, Father, in faith, I cry out to you, preparing my heart, knowing that I need a Savior. And I asked of you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins, believing that you have made a propitiation for my sins by living and dying. So today I receive for myself a Savior. His name is Jesus. Understanding there is no other way. You are the hope and the life of my salvation. So today I confess my sins to you one and all. And I invite you into my life. Believing that you are my Savior. And acknowledging you as just that this morning. Promising by the help and the grace of the Holy Spirit. That from this day forward I will serve you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer this morning, whether you're in this room or joining us through iChurch, can I just say to you, welcome to the family of God. Because the Bible said that if we confess with our mouths, believe in our hearts, He will forgive us of our sins. Just like that, preacher. Just like that. Isn't it the miracle of the grace of God? And so today, we say thank you, Jesus. And Merry Christmas to each one of you. Go and enjoy your family. Enjoy the remainder of this Christmas day. But keep that treasure. Keep that treasure fresh in your heart. In Jesus' name we pray. May God bless each of you. Merry Christmas.
Before you leave today, those of you that have hung an ornament on the tree, it would be of great help to us if you would retrieve that. Uh, because I think Debbie and her team are going to try to uh, replenish this building this week and get it ready for New Year's. So help us by getting your ornament off the tree. Bless you today.